Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Salmon Trout Steel Letter Podcast again. I am your host, Lucas Holmgren, and this episode of the Salmon Trout Steel Letter Podcast is brought to you by Fishfield and Daiwa. Fishfield not only has an incredible selection of fishing gear for salmon, steelhead, saltwater, and beyond, but they also offer an incredible selection of Daiwa products, including some new reels. You should check it Check out Fishfield, see their Daiwa selection, and everything else they've got in there. So, uh, today's episode is on a subject, this will not be an interview, or even, uh, this won't actually even be an article reading. This is uh, the mailbag, and I'd like to uh, thank Braden Olin from Vancouver, Washington, for writing in with this question here. It's great to hear from you, and if you guys want to, you can send questions over to customer service at amatobooks.com, A-M-A-T-O books.com. So, uh, the question from Braden is, how do I catch coho in low clear water without access to bait? Excellent question, and there's a lot of different answers to that, and a lot of different variables. The first one being, what type of low clear water are we talking? I'm going to first talk about when uh, water temperatures are warm and the water is really low and maybe it hasn't rained yet or just barely. Uh, this is typical for A-run coho in uh, the lower Columbia, where those fish can be incredibly tough biters. So with those ones kind of in mind, um, Braden being from Vancouver, I'm assuming we're fishing a lot of the same stuff. Um, so with those early run fish, uh, it's interesting that you say... Um, without having access to bait, which is a great, um, which is a great question. Interestingly enough, during those easy times or those early times, bait is not necessarily the answer anyway, in the first place. Um, A-run coho are absolutely ravenous out in the ocean. And as they push in, uh, through the estuary, and then even down in the lower tidewater sections, they, they can still be somewhat bitey, but in these, uh, rivers here, um, Once they get up past that, it seems like as soon as they move out of tidewater, they just completely shut down. And there can be tons of them, like there is right now, and you won't get a sniff. It doesn't matter how good you are. However, I do see people get a sniff, and I myself have every once in a while on those A-run coho. However, the ratio of of catching on A-run coho in this area um, to actual fish present is just, it's, it's really depressing. But when they're out there rolling and there's beautiful fish and you have a chance at getting a bite and bringing home a gorgeous fish it's hard not to go out there anyway so during those times the best bet is to first of all just get as far down in the river as you can to find them as soon as you can if you can fish tidewater that's great that's where those fish are going to be showing up and still being a little snappier Um, and the best bet uh, it's very popular around here from what I hear it doesn't seem to be as popular in other places but just casting plugs like the wiggle wart the maglip, uh, you know, anything that has that you've got some contrast on the plug or some eyes on the plug seem to help, like in the case of the wiggle wart. Um, but you know, a little bit of contrasting stuff and just retrieved pretty quick. And then just fishing those and casting them continuously in as many places as you can get is, is really seems to be the way to go. And a friend of mine, Chris Heller, uh, does does really well on these A-run coho when they're really tough to get to go. But I kind of asked him what what he does, and of course, you know, where possible, get them on the tide, and you know, look for a look for something sipping the surface way down in the lower river, and cast a spinner or a plug at it. But upriver, what he's found effective, and uh, and he told me he was fishing with Buzz Ramsey's nephew, I believe it was Jason, and uh, and he gave him a you know a little tip that Chris has been using to great advantage, which is to cast out a plug right near a log jam, something that just looks way too shallow, and you know there's only a little spot that maybe a fish could be sitting in, and just crank it out there by that log jam, and once it lands, give it two quick cranks on your bait caster or spinning reel, and let the thing dive down, and then just stop and let it come back up, and then do the same thing, and then a quick retrieve, keep blowing through spots that's what you do so um that is one way to do it at the same time there's days where that just won't get them to go either Uh, another thing that i just saw i was down uh 
fishing uh, behind Nick Amato's house with Nick and Tim Riley, our salesman, as well as uh, my friend Trent, um, who I met on the Egagic River. And Trent's a really good fisherman, but he's uh, he had never tried spoon fishing really before. And so I told him, like, hey, blue and silver, you know, uh, spoon is, is that, that color is really consistent for every type of salmon and steelhead. And he went out there. We had a ton of fish jumping. Nick's next to me. Of course, he knows what he's doing. And, you know, we were fishing longer than Nick was, but Nick's throwing a couple different techniques and he's caught a few coho in his day and it's just tough. And, and we're talking about, well, you know, once it rains, we've got a totally different, you know, a temperature change, a pressure change, all that sort of stuff. So we're going to have a new chance at him. But at the moment, we're just sitting there watching him roll while we cast. And just up river, um, Trent hooks a gorgeous A-run coho. And it comes on that, on that uh, little Clio two-fifth ounce spoon, blue and silver. Thing comes flying out of the water. We all get a good look at it and, and, and spits the hook. But So one of the things is spoons as a... As another lure option besides plugs, spoons are awesome. Spinners, ideally, you would think, and in certain cases, yeah, they work, but just an anecdotal experience, I'm not saying it's true, but in in my experience, for those really tough to get to go fish, a nice spoon fluttering seems to work better in a spinner, in my experience, and again, that could be totally anecdotal, and maybe you'll, you, that's the best lure in the world on your river, you know. But spoons are one that I definitely go with for sure. And then, of course, in the boat, you know, trolling uh, world or back trolling world, plugs is the way to go. And, again, the maglips, the wiggle warts, of course, purple and black. And is a, those two colors are deadly, deadly for coho in, in, in the case of plugs. You know, you call it Dr. Death or what have you. Uh, pinks, purples, blacks, um, blues, light blues. It's always nice to mix it up and you know kind of fish stuff that both a coho and a chinook are going to chomp that's why i love plugs and spoons so much in that early season because even if the a runs aren't going for it but you got a chinook that's ready to play or conversely a steelhead and during this time you may have a million a run coho in a hole and one steelhead and you'll be fishing a spoon through there and the steelhead was the only thing that grabbed it so if that's the case that's a lot of fun they're still beautiful at this time of year with a bunch of fight in them so it's a it's a good time but now low clear water in the case of after it's rained and you're kind of past that early run of coho fish are starting to get bigger you know the b run so to speak um that case of low clear water is totally different and the first thing i'll do in low clear water is change absolutely nothing about my setup maybe a jig color you know Something like that. But for the most part, coho, unlike some other species, can sometimes still just be absolutely bonkers over big, flashy, clowny stuff in low clear water. And it's weird. So I'll try a bit of that. Now, if it's not going to happen on uh, on the twitching jigs, which, by the way, just as a uh, side note, I love twitching jigs. It's probably what I do most for coho. But I don't do it for A-run coho personally because it just doesn't work as well for me as plugs and spoons do. Um, but after the first rains of fall, all of a sudden it's jig time and bring them out and twitch like crazy. So, you know, in the case of low clear water, later coho, especially really late coho, if uh, my jigs aren't working, I'll try to go with like a straight black jig with a, you know, maybe a chartreuse head or something and, you know, kind of play around with that stuff. But really then is low clear, the, the low clear and cold water I truly believe in spoons big time, even more than jigs. Um, just to be able to slowly flutter a spoon around is incredible. Low, clear, cold water as well. A plug can wake them up. Um, if you do have that case, you know, in November and such, and you got cold, clear water, a plug and a spoon are money all day. I mean, that's kind of for me. If I had a plug, spoon, and a jig, I'm happy. With coho, Eggs, yes, eggs are a very good bait, but kind of like winter steelhead, um, if I have the option to not fish eggs, I would prefer that personally. But a nice basic egg cure with a little salt and sugar and, 
you know, maybe some scents that you like, but you know, some of the more basic pro cure, I mean, a good old, or, well, I guess that fuse cure, but you know, even some of their older ones, any, anyhow, the, the egg game and everything, I know you said with no access to bait, but, um, to kind of speak on that eggs, simple cures, you know, mid-level clusters of eggs. And, uh, you know, you could, I don't know that people mess with the sodium sulfites and stuff as much as they do with Chinook. Um, to me, it seems kind of the general consensus is just well taken care of, nicely cured eggs that are somewhat tacky, but milk, they don't have to milk quite as much as a Chinook egg, but you're not going to go wrong if it's nice and milky too. And then the sand shrimp, of course, everything eats sand shrimp. Coon shrimp actually does work very well in some situations and then in other places it doesn't um i've got a buddy tyler craft um that trolls uh spinners with with coon shrimp like prawn spinners essentially for coho um up in the columbia river kind of up in the gorge area and does very 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 well however it's not necessarily the first bait i'm going to put on as a as a bait um in when I'm tributary fishing farther down here. But, um, but you know, like I said, different places, it's absolutely crazy effective. That, of course, is going to depend on your cures, and I'd like to say I've got it all figured out. I don't. I usually stick with, you know, Washington Coon Shrimp because I know it works, and then start playing around with, uh, with scents from there on out. And that I have a lot of fun with, but I don't cure my own Coon Shrimp. So I couldn't speak to that. I just I just choose a production uh, blend that I can count on, essentially, for consistency's sake. And yeah, again, with, with coho and low clear water, they're a lot of fun. They can be super bitey, um, and then they can also be horribly non-bitey. So sometimes with the A-run coho, do what you got to do. You can wait around for the bite. But don't kill yourself in that early season trying to get them and getting frustrated and thinking that you're terrible at fishing because I've sat at a hole with uh, hundreds of of fish jumping over, you know, a matter of a couple minutes and watch some of the best fishermen that I know not catch a one. So it happens. Wait around. Morning, evening is best bet. Riffles um, where they're moving as opposed to, you know, just big jumping holes areas that's probably where they're going to bite a little better and and then also get as far down in the river as you can (laughs) low you know they say um water's low fish low there's there's a lot of merit to that because generally the fresher a coho the better a biter pretty much always although they will turn on up river so and then once the rain comes it's a completely different ball game I mean, you can you can use the same techniques and everything, but as far as the bites, uh, coho really seem to turn on once the water comes up pretty good and they're streaming in fast. And coho move quick, and they react to some to some funny things. They're a lot of fun. They're they're the bass of the salmon world, in my opinion. Just the areas that they'll sit in. Um, interestingly enough, coho salmon. I believe uh, from what I've read, they like a slight incline to spawn on. And they are okay with spawning kind of facing um, diagonal into the current or or kind of being on an off. They'll sit in these really odd areas that you wouldn't expect a salmon or steelhead to sit in. And they'll actually spawn in some of those areas. So that's what kind of makes them more bassy when they get into the river. Uh, I think just in general, whereas a steelhead's going to spawn straight into the current on a flat typically. And a Chinook usually straight into the current, I believe, as well. So it's just kind of an interesting uh, fish that is a lot of fun to fish for. And Braden, I just want to say thanks for the question. Again, if you guys have any questions, send them on over to customer service at amatobooks.com. Love to hear from you and what you think of the podcast and uh, and how your fishing has been going. So uh, send it on over. Um, and Again, this episode is brought to you by Fishfield and Daiwa. So thank you very much for sponsoring this episode. Thanks again, guys. Comment is the best thing you can do for me. It really helps on uh, all the platforms. It truly does. So I appreciate it, and uh, we'll talk to you guys soon.